Do you wrestle with dreams? Do you contend with shadows? Do you move in a kind of sleep? Time has slipped away. Your life is stolen. You tarried with trifles, victim of your folly. One of the most intriguing aspects of Frank Herbert's Dune series is that those who would be considered minor or supporting characters often contribute mightily to the overall story. This is the case with the Fremen warrior Jameis, whose actions go on to deeply impact the journey of Paul Atreides and echo the greater themes of the Dune saga. In this video, I'd like to discuss Jameis, the Amtal rite he invoked, and the unique role he plays in Frank Herbert's series. Spoiler warning as I will be discussing significant details from the story of Dune. Jameis is a desert creature, raised and molded into a formidable Fremen warrior by his deadly homeworld, Arrakis. The Fremen have adapted over thousands of years to survive various threats, both from the desert world itself and from greedy outsiders like House Harkonnen who hunt them for sport and plunder Arrakis for its precious spice. After their ancestors, the Zen Sunni wanderers arrived on Dune thousands of years before, they quickly came to realize that those who do not know and live by the ways of the desert would swiftly die from it. And not only that, but the carelessness and ignorance of one could have devastating fatal consequences to an entire tribe. As such, certain laws and customs must be obeyed with military discipline for the good of the tribe, for the good of all Fremen. However, even those trained in desert knowledge and water discipline can still succumb to the dangers of Arrakis. Death is quite literally a part of life for the Fremen, it is their constant companion. To maintain the utmost strength of a tribe, those seeking to lead must issue a challenge of combat to the death, after which the victor is viewed as worthy of becoming their leader. Water is then reclaimed from the deceased to be distributed as seen fit. Their customs may seem harsh, even callous to outsiders, but ultimately, everything they do is to ensure the continued power and survival of the tribe. Jameis is known among his people as a capable warrior, possessing superior fighting skills and desert wisdom, proving himself to be an asset to his community of Siege Tabor under the leadership of Stilgar. However, even though he was formidable in battle against Harkonnen patrols, he had a few flaws in his personality, including a stubborn, closed-minded demeanor, along with faulty self-control. And to a Fremen, lack of self-control can prove fatal. The Fremen are also deeply religious, with superstitious tendencies. The Mahdi was prophesied as the one who would lead them to paradise, also known as the Lisan al-Gaib, the voice from the outer world, this messiah was said to be an off-worlder and child of a Bene Gesserit. This chosen one would mean their salvation, a future where no Fremen would want for water again. To the residents of Arrakis, outsiders are all the same. Yet, when seeing the arrival of the ducal heir Paul Atreides, son of the Bene Gesserit Lady Jessica, rumor quickly spread of the possible fulfillment of their messianic legends of old. While others were desperate to see the long-awaited realization of this prophecy, Jameis would come forward to test Paul and Jessica, doubting their fulfillment of this legend. Jameis is encountered during a time of great desperation for Paul and Jessica. After escaping from the clutches of the Harkonnens, who launched an all-out attack on the Atreides and took back Arrakis with secret Imperial support, they fled into the deep desert to find the Fremen, the desert power that his father, the late Duke Leto, was attempting to gain. Most intruders regret coming across the Fremen in the deep desert. And even though Liette Kynes vouched for Paul and Jessica, Jameis was not convinced of their value and repeatedly urged Stilgar to eliminate the intruders for their water. Stilgar granted Paul sanctuary due to his youth and ability to be trained in the ways of the desert. Jessica, on the other hand, was deemed an unnecessary risk to the tribe's safety and would have been killed if not for her own Bene Gesserit training. Jessica gained the upper hand on Stilgar, and in the ensuing chaos, Paul managed to disarm Jameis, an act that would set the Fremen warrior on a path of self-destruction. As Stilgar was made to see that Jessica was a weirding woman and a fighter, she too was granted sanctuary in exchange for teaching his people the weirding way. 
This added insult to injury for Jameis, as he was certain which force was at work when he was bested by Paul and remained unconvinced they were the fulfillment of their messianic prophecies. He became filled with rage and resentment, which impelled him to invoke the Amtal rule. To know a thing well, know its limits. Only when pushed beyond its tolerances will true nature be seen. This is the Amtal rule. Jameis intended to test Jessica and her part in their messianic legends and issued the Tahadi challenge in which he would engage in single combat with her champion, Paul. With little choice but to accept this challenge, Jameis and Paul dueled without still suits, armed only with a sacred Chris knife. Jameis was a fierce fighter and an expert in wielding a blade with either hand. He moved in such a way to try to confuse Paul while he hid his knife shift. Paul had to use every bit of his Mentat, Bene Gesserit, and Atreides military training to attain victory. It was certainly no accident that Paul bested him earlier, and as the duel continued, Jameis grew more desperate. It appeared as though Paul was toying with his opponent, but in actuality, he did not want to kill Jameis. Regardless, death was the test of it, and in the end, Jameis fell by Paul's blade. This was a defining moment in the journey of Paul Atreides. It had earned Paul his Fremen name and a place among Stilgar's tribe. Any lingering doubts of whether this boy was the Mahdi quickly dissipated, as no ordinary child could best a fully trained and armed Fremen warrior, let alone one as brave and capable as Jameis. Jameis was mourned and given a full ritual funeral. The friends of Jameis came forth to offer their respects as they recalled his courageous and selfless deeds. He would be sorely missed. When it became Paul's turn to honor Jameis' memory as part of the ceremony, he said, I was a friend of Jameis. Jameis taught me that when you kill, you pay for it. I wish I'd known Jameis better. And in this moment, he shed a tear. On this hostile desert world where every drop of water is precious, this act of giving water to the dead is viewed as a symbol of profound reverence to the Fremen. Paul would continue to carry with him the weight of the senseless death of Jameis. But was Jameis right to test the Atreides to see if they indeed were the ones spoken of in their paradisaic prophecies? Or was Jameis simply letting his pride and frustration cloud his judgment? While these qualities were most certainly a factor in his decision to call Paul out, Invoking Amtal to test if Paul was indeed the Lizan al Gaib was not without its merits. A major message conveyed by Frank Herbert's Dune series is a warning against trusting charismatic leaders. Although his stubborn nature proved to be his undoing, it can be said that there was some wisdom in his instinct to question Paul and Jessica's intentions and his unwillingness to blindly follow Paul out of a desire to see the fulfillment of what was ultimately a manufactured prophecy. Yes, the prophecies and legends of the Fremen were seeded long ago by the Bene Gesserit themselves to be exploited when needed as a sort of safety net. The presence of the Mahdi legend on Arrakis indicated just how awful conditions were on the planet as it was only reserved for certain cultures where a Bene Gesserit would need to assume total control. The deeply held religious beliefs in a messiah are merely a tool to be used by the Bene Gesserit for their own purposes. While Jameis was right in his instinct to test the Atreides' heir, the result of Paul's victory only ended up confirming what most Fremen suspected, that he was indeed their prophetic savior, preparing them to readily follow his leadership. This trial by combat taught Paul a powerful lesson of the ways of the desert, and as his prescient abilities began to awaken, he would become intimately aware of how his every action could drastically shape the course of the future. And not only that, he'd realized just how powerless he was to change what became destined to take place. But I'm curious to know what you think of Jameis and his role in the story of Dune. Are there any lessons to be learned from his unwillingness to accept Paul as the Chosen One? If you're familiar with the Dune saga, do you think that Paul's killing of Jameis had a significant impact on his later decisions in the series? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.